So now we can look a little bit more at another application of Hess's law. So if I already knew all of the um, all of the enthalpies of formation for a whole bunch of different compounds, I don't have to break it down into um, you has this law for all these are kind of in a table. So how can I use that information to help me figure out what the enthalpy of the reaction would be for an entirely new reaction? So enthalpy of formation is basically when you take a, a compound and you build it up from its smaller pieces. You build it up from its elements. Like suppose I wanted to look at the enthalpy of formation of this compound. So if I had you know C3H8, right? The elements that make that up are carbon and hydrogen. Right? And the elemental form of hydrogen is H2. Remember, that's diatomic. So to balance this off, I would put a, a 3 here and a 4 here. And that would be the formation reaction. And this would have an enthalpy associated with it, that delta H. Um, if you look that up in a table, that, um, right, that, that'll just be the delta H of formation of you know, C3H8. Okay, it corresponds to this reaction. Another reaction, suppose you had... Um, carbon dioxide. All right, so suppose we have carbon dioxide, we have CO2, that's made from carbon and oxygen. It's just that easy. And then that's the, the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide. Um, you can do the same thing for like water. Right? So if we had water, H2O, that's made of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and, um, and oxygen. Okay, so to balance this up a little bit, um, something like that. Put a half in front of there, that would make, that would make this balance. Usually we don't balance with a half, but um, enthalpies of formation are for one mole of your product, and so that's why I gave you that one there. Um, and so that enthalpy of formation, delta H, F of water, great. So you can only do this for compounds. You can make these reactions, these formation reactions for compounds. Uh, for elements, the enthalpy is just going to be zero because you can't build up a, an element from its element. It's that, that is, we basically assign all the elements a zero enthalpy of formation. The standard enthalpies of formation, that's what you're going to find in a table, and that just means that the temperature is at 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is one atmosphere. So suppose we had this reaction here, and we're going to do, I'll show you how, how you can use Hess's law to do this, and then I'll show you the shortcut. So again, all these delta H's are in a table somewhere for all these compounds, but these are the formation reactions. So if I were to look at this reaction, I would say, all right, C3H8, all right, I have that formation reaction. It's just on the product side. If I want to build this up just like we did before using Hess's law, then I'd have to flip this around, right, and I would have to change the sign of that one. Uh, and then I would go to, right, and that's kind of what I have here. And this, I'd have a negative the delta H, right, negative delta H, a formation of the C3, oops, C3H8. And then I'd have O2, and then I, I see how I have O2 here and I have O2 here. I'm going to leave the oxygen alone and hopefully it'll come out the end. Because if I change it for, you know, for this reaction, then it's going to change, um, when I add it up, um, when I add the second reaction to it, the third reaction, it's not going to equal 5. So skip that one because it's in both places. And then I look at the product side, I have 3 CO2. All right, so I want to get 3 CO2, so I'm just going to multiply this guy by 3. All right, and so I multiply this by 3, that 3 delta H. That's what I did over here. So now I have 3 times the delta H of the CO2. And then I have water. Uh, so I have water as the product here. I want to do, I'll multiply everybody by 4. 4. Four, four times a half is just going to give me a 2 here. So I multiply this by 4 times the delta H of water. And so what I end up with is basically this, this reaction here. Um, the products minus the reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. So when you look at this final delta H of this whole reaction, right, the reaction, it's going to be, I just add all these up. It's um, I have three times the delta H of the carbon dioxide. I have four times the delta H of the water. And then I have negative the delta H of the C3H8. These are my products, right? Those are some of the products. This M and N, those are the coefficients. And then these are my reactants.
and it was negative because I had to flip it around because in a formation reaction, um, the compound is the is the product. But in this reaction over here, I wanted it as a reactant, so I had to flip it around. That's why I changed the sign. So it's basically products minus reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. I only had a one here. I only had a one here, so I didn't have to multiply by any numbers. But this is going to be your final uh, reaction: products minus reactants. And so you can use that equation. Um, and here's a table that has a whole bunch of different compounds in it. And you can find the enthalpy of formation. I'm sorry, the enthalpy of the, the enthalpy change for the reaction, the delta H of the reaction, for any kind of reaction. So these are my reactants here. These are my products. So if I wanted to, I just have to look up these values. Careful with the phase of matter. Do you see how water has uh, a number in it for liquid and for gas, different numbers. So make sure your phases of matter will matter. Uh, and we'll do products minus reactants, right? These are my products, these are my reactants. I'm just gonna look up these things in the table. So basically, my delta H of my reaction, um, if I were to write it out, and you don't have to do it every, every single time, I'm gonna have two times the number in the table for carbon dioxide, right? So I'm gonna look that up, carbon dioxide gas, plus three times whatever's in the table for liquid water. Those are my products. And then subtract out the reactants. I have one um, C, C2H3, H5OH, and then oxygen, three times oxygen. Oxygen, which is going to be zero because that's oxygen. So I'm going to look at these numbers in the table. So carbon dioxide, two times carbon dioxide gas. So go up here, you find carbon dioxide gas right there. That's the negative 393.5. And then for, I want three times liquid water, which is right here. That's negative 285.8. And then those are my products, right? Over here, products minus reactants. C2H5OH. Uh, there you go, ethanol C2H5OH. That's this one. So I have negative 277.7. And then oxygen, you can search all you want in this table. It's not going to be there. Elements are zero. The enthalpy of formation, remember these are formation, you're can't form um, an element from its elements. Its elemental form is zero. So if it's not in that table, it's an element, it's going to be zero. All right. So sometimes the hardest part is just putting all this in your calculator and making sure you don't make any silly uh, mistakes. So when I do two times negative 393.5 plus three times negative 285.8, I get negative 1644.4 um, minus negative 277.7. And when you work that out, you get negative 1366.7 kilojoules. So that's what your delta H of your reaction looks like. So you don't have to memorize this table. You'll be given this table, these numbers, the enthalpies of formation, you don't have to memorize. Well, let's try something similar. So given the standard enthalpy change um, the, in the table, and down here, this is the enthalpy of change for the reaction. Uh, use that to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation, sorry, enthalpy of formation of CuO. So it's basically like this should be in the table. You're looking for that number that should be in the table, but in this case, it's not in the table. So the way you would set this up, they're, but they're giving you the enthalpy change of the reaction. So they're basically telling you what the products minus reactants look like. Products you know, minus reactants. Don't forget the stoichiometric coefficients. Usually they're all one here, so it's fine. Um, all right, so we're going to have, we have our delta H of the reaction, products minus reactants. So these are your products. Um, copper solid is an element, so the enthalpy is going to be zero. Hydrogen is going to be zero. So the only one you really have to look up in the table um, is water, liquid, which we had from the last example. Liquid water, right? negative 285.8. And then this is kind of what you're looking for. So normally that would be in the table, and then you'd find the delta H of the reaction. In this case, they're giving you the delta H of the reaction. They're saying delta H of the reaction is negative 129.7 kilojoules. That's going to equal the products minus reactants. So these are your products, right? So I have 0 plus negative 285.8 products minus the reactants, which is your CuO plus 0, because that's an element. 
So you basically have negative 129.7 kilojoules equals negative 285.8. kilojoules um, minus the CUO. So add 285.8 and that gives you 156.1 equals negative CUO. So just change your signs and that's your final answer.